Hello, and welcome to Talk D93, Community Consolidated School District 93's podcast, hosted by me, Superintendent Dr. David Hill. In it, I sit down from time to time with key figures who impact our district to have discussions about specific CCSD 93 programs, services, roles, events, history, and more. Today, I'm pleased to continue our conversation about school safety in CCSD 93 by discussing the district's discipline process. It's important for our families to have the opportunity to understand the different ways we work with students to provide discipline and learning opportunities for students who have misbehaved or exhibited unexpected behavior in our schools. To unpack this topic a little bit, I'm pleased to be joined by CCSD 93's Assistant Superintendent for Student Services, Dr. Krista Morrissey, and Carroll Stream Elementary School Principal, Corinne McCabe. Welcome, Dr. Morrissey and Ms. McCabe. Thank you. Thank you for having us. Thank you for having us. Yes. I think as a starting point, it's first important to define discipline so that we all are on the same page about CCSD 93's philosophy on discipline. Dr. Morsi, can you help me out with this definition? I'd be happy to. Discipline shares the root with the word disciple. It means to teach or to guide. It does not mean to control or punish. You might choose to take it even a step further in keeping with the word disciple. You could interpret it as meaning to teach or to guide in a loving way. There's actually three types of discipline, preventative, supportive, and corrective discipline. Preventative discipline is about establishing expectations, guidelines, and classroom rules for behavior during the first days of lessons or in order to proactively prevent disruptions. Supportive discipline, on the other hand, occurs in the case of a transgression. It is usually a verbal warning or suggestion for the correct behavior. Corrective discipline comes into play when a student has failed to change his or her behavior after repeated attempts of supportive discipline. It mostly refers to the logical and connected consequences delivered following an infraction. Dr. Morsi, thank you very much for sharing those definitions for us. As an educational institution, it makes sense that we'd focus on using a system of discipline that creates an opportunity to teach students expected behaviors. I know there's a lot of research on this subject, Does it back up using discipline as a teaching opportunity? It certainly does. There's um, well over 20 years of research that really looks at the type of um, consequences schools administer for students. Um, Expulsion, suspensions, kind of the key of a lot of that background in research. And what that has shown is that in and of itself really does not change behavior at all. The research really establishes that a process of strong data systems and practices through a tiered model provides a solid foundation for teaching and building a positive climate and culture. As we um, use the research through our um, PBIS systems, that research really comes out of the University of Oregon, as well as a variety of other universities where they've really looked at randomized samples, they've done trials, they've synthesized that school-wide PBIS model from a mental health institute as well, and all of that research we use as a district when we put our system together. We have a comprehensive um, classroom and behavior management um, across the district where we look at making certain that every child understands the expectations. We actually teach those expectations to strengthen that in the learning. The Office of Special Education, Dr. Rifle, has done a lot of research, and in that research, she states that actually you can improve behavior by 80% just by pointing out what someone is doing correctly. So we use that philosophy in all of our school-wide and our classroom-based discipline. That's interesting research. And I know it informs a lot of CCSC 93's discipline processes. Ms. McCabe, can you walk us through the different components of our discipline process? Sure. We uh, tend to use a tiered system uh, that is focused on those three types of discipline that Dr. Morrissey referenced, preventative, supportive, and corrective discipline. So at the tier one level, we're focused on being more proactive with teaching all students what our expectations are. We provide them with cool tool lessons. We set up expectations throughout our building, and then we constantly go back to those expectations and um, provide specific behavior reinforcement regarding those expectations. Most children are successful within that level of support. Some children might need an additional layer of support, which we refer to as our tier two practices. 
at the tier two level, a student um, may need to be retaught about a specific expectation because they just needed an extra dose of instruction. They may need it presented in a different way. Those structures are put into place for small groups of kids. And then at the tier three level, which would be our more intense layer of support, uh, we provide corrective discipline in which we might provide natural consequences for a behavior. Um, We layer it on with the tier two and um, tier one practices as well. So students are always getting what all other students, um, but it's just an extra layer of support for them. A natural or logical consequence might be connected to a specific behavior. Uh, For example, a student who may draw on a desk, right, their natural consequence might be that they're helping to remove the graffiti from the desk, and then it would be us finding a different outlet for their artwork. In addition to a logical consequence at the Tier 3 level, we also focus in on supporting not only the students but the family as well. So oftentimes we'll ask parents to be involved in consequences, but then also our conversations around how to repair any kind of relationship that has been damaged due to a behavior, and they work with us through that restorative process. Thank you very much for sharing the components of our robust discipline process. Interesting. You both uh, have touched on families being involved in the discipline process. Ms. McCabe, can you go in a little bit more about how our families are involved in this process? Sure. Our families, um, at least at Carroll Stream, are are involved um, from the beginning. So parent communication in our building is huge. We um, specify our three Bs, and we've actually shifted them to our three We's. So we are... um, responsible, we are respectful, and we are safe in our building. Um, And that is communicated to parents often uh, through principal newsletters, classroom teachers laid all over the school. And then if there is a need for an additional layer of support, parents are notified um, via communication forms. Also, we have uh, discipline communication forms that we fill out, um, but those are always sent home in addition to a phone call or an email. So uh, communication is very important to us in the district. If a student needs, if if there is harm involved in a student's behavior or there is a student needing even um, further support, we would bring the families into our building, have Zoom calls, just to involve them in the restorative process. Hmm. Thank you. And how about behaviors that may be a little more physically or emotionally harmful? Are there added measures the district may take? There certainly are. Um, In fact, I believe Ms. Tobin did a podcast recently on our threat assessment process, and so that's a piece of it. So if there's disciplinary action that requires um, a risk assessment, we are blessed in this district to have psychs and social workers in every building, and so they would begin by doing a risk assessment for a student. And if that student um, was deemed to be at um, moderate or high risk, that might then trigger us to do a safety evaluation. Those safety evaluations we do in partnership with um, Glen Oaks Hospital, and we support our students and our families in using that system. Excellent. And it sounds like ultimately, no matter the behavior we're hoping to modify, it is our ultimate goal is teaching students the expected or correct behavior? Always. It's very true. (laughs) Just like teaching reading and math, if a student doesn't know how to perform the behavior, we first have to teach it, assist them with practicing it, and then application of use of that. Ms. McCabe and Dr. Morsi, I want to thank you for taking the time to help us understand a little bit more about CCFT 93's discipline process. Thank you for having us. Thank you. Talk D93 listeners, please subscribe to Talk D93 on Apple Podcasts, Google Play, Spotify, or wherever you find your podcasts. And don't miss a thing from CCS93 by following us on Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, and YouTube. You can also find me on Twitter at drhilld93. Join us next time for more from CCSD93. Thank you.